tell us how this increase has been worked out because a 45% hike in the middle of a cost of living crisis when public sector workers are being told there's no money available, well, it will have people scratching their heads to put it mildly, will it not? It will. This looks awful. Um, let's be honest, King Charles couldn't have got off to a worse financial start than by doing this, particularly when he says he's slimming down the monarchy and very obviously there are fewer working royals. So why so much extra money? Well, it's all complicated and it's all a bit silly, bluntly. Um, all of this is a stupid calculation based upon an act of parliament passed in 2012 to try and provide a rational basis on which the funds made available to the monarchy were transformed at that time. They've been flat for several years now at around 85, 86 billion a year. So it's fair to say they haven't had a rise for a few years. Uh, the figure is based upon a formula which is again linked to the value or the profits of something called the Crown Estates. The Crown Estates are basically vast quantities of land holdings that are owned by the Crown, which basically charge rents, make a great deal of money, and part of that is paid over to the King. Um, and that the formula was he got about 25% of the profits. That's actually been reduced to 12%. Um, as a consequence of recent massive inflation in the profits that the Crown Estate makes. what? Why have they made so much extra profit? Because they own the seabed. And the seabed what? is a really good place to be right now if you want to put up, of course, a wind farm on, on offshore ah. wind farm. So they're charging a fortune for renting out the seabed to offshore wind farms, making a great deal of money, licensing these places, bringing the cash in. And as a consequence, the Crown Estates are flush with cash and Prince Charles is going to be allowed more money. Now, again, let's be honest, and I will be honest, I'm think I'm duty bound to be that. Not all this money necessarily ends up in Prince Charles's pocket. The argument is that he's got to renovate Buckingham Palace, which again is a slightly difficult argument to sustain right now because lots of people have got to renovate their homes, but don't necessarily get a 45% um, pay increase to do so. Just because you need to do something doesn't mean to say your pay goes up. And it isn't, um, it's not unfair to say that the crown is quite rich in its own right. The king obviously is a very wealthy man himself. He's also basically abandoned Buckingham Palace. As we now see, almost everything takes place at Windsor. He doesn't want to live at Buckingham Palace. He doesn't. And investitures and everything else, even the visiting heads of state, seem to all go to Windsor. So what the heck are they spending so much money on Buckingham Palace for? Who knows? Mm. It's, a, it's a white elephant, quite literally. But nonetheless, he apparently is going to get this money for several years to, pay, to do up Buckingham Palace for a purpose which we do not know, um, but the optic is dire. It is what dire. it looks it's like. He has appalling. got extra money. So I've offered all the excuses now, being as good as I can be for somebody who, frankly, is not a monarchist. And now let me just you know, put it in context. This stinks because the government has chosen to literally allow him these funds to do up Buckingham mm -hmm. Palace at a time when there is so much other need in the economy. Much greater, I suggest, than renovating Buckingham Palace, which mm -hmm. doesn't even appear to have a purpose. And, and they will say, Richard, of course, that's just the law. That's how the system works. That's how it's been designed. But of course, there will presumably now be pressure on them as the government, but also perhaps on Prince Charles, on our minister's part, to change the rules so he doesn't get such a big increase. And perhaps on the king's part, pressure to give some of that money back. Well, look, to say that this is the law is a little bit absurd because the law here because is they incredibly change flexible. Mm -hmm. They can change the law whenever they like. You know, this is the government and the guy whose job it is to sign off laws agree, relying on the fact that this is the law, we can't <laughs> change it. Well, of course, they obviously can change it. They can change any of these rules to suit their own purpose. This does not need to take place. It is already, as I say, reflecting a change in the rule. The percentage has come down, but the amount of money is going up. It just looks wrong right now for mm -hmm. such a large sum of money mm -hmm. to go to a cause, which is not, frankly, really in the public interest at this mm. moment. And Prince Charles would be very wise to say, let's put this off for the time being, can we? Let's wait till times are better, then perhaps we can slip through the budget in some other way to cover the cost of restoring Buckingham Palace, but not doing this right now. Richard, good to speak to you. Thank you, Richard Murphy, Political Economist, Director of Tax Research UK and Professor at the Sheffield University Management School. Yes, of course, there'll be pressure on the King to give it back, but shouldn't the real pressure be on the government to change the rules? The same ministers, Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, who is saying, I'm really sorry, we can't spend, we can't afford to give nurses and doctors and teachers and public sector workers a greater pay rise than 6%. There's not enough money, it's inflationary. Oh, by the way, here's another 50 million quid for the King. 
so you can renovate your palace, literally so you can renovate your palace. I mean, come off it. That line's not going to hold, is it? The optics of that are dreadful. The politics of that is woeful. And the principle, actually, the morality of that just absolutely reeks. I can imagine if you're a junior doctor or nurse listening to that report just then, you are absolutely seething, and rightly so.